Dan here, deed, deed. This isn't really a DD speed shop video. So we got my Chevy one ton in the garage and for some reason the boom is missing out of it. So those of you who have been around for a while know I bought this truck, specifically I wanted this truck uh, a few years, two years ago, three years ago maybe, because um, I wanted to make myself a homemade tow truck. Now uh, I wanted this truck exactly. I wanted a regular cab, long bed, four by four, gas, one ton, single rear wheel. For a lot of different reasons, mainly here, uh, dualies are not allowed to be parked on the street overnight. So I didn't want to deal with that uh, hassle because I like to park my stuff wherever, whenever. I then found myself a old Holmes Wrecker, uh, 220, 440, same thing, uh, by using an electric winch on it. And it was bolted in here and we built our own kind of sling setup and whatever. And it was working good. Now, marketplace. It's always freaking marketplace. Uh, originally, I wanted like a wheel lift style truck, but that just simply wasn't in the budget. They are huge dollars new, and I mean, I've been looking to use and have never found one until last week. This popped up. A uh, couple of thousand dollars. So it's... Uh, a sneaker sneaker lift there so this is like an auto load typically for like a repo kind of thing when you watch those youtube videos or tiktok videos of people backing up lifting the car up and driving away and only leaving the truck that's what this is clearly overkill and more than i would ever need but beggars can't be choosers and when the price is right and it was close to home i pulled the trigger on it uh it is a project so there are some Variables, we'll call them. It is missing uh, the controller, so I'd order a new one of those. And the pump had been scavenged off of it. Pretty simple setup. It does have like an external pump with reservoir, so I just get one of those, hook up a couple of lines. It then runs into this kind of valve body with some servos. Now, unfortunately, the wiring has been, I wouldn't say it's cooked, but it's been kind of ripped off and stuff. So we're hoping we can make that work. That's the only real expensive kind of unique kind of part of the lift as far as i'm concerned but again this company that, that it came from is still in business so we can still get stuff it's not the end of the world i assume all the rams and all that will work uh the story was it was on a uh a work truck of some kind of business didn't really end up getting used so they decided to take it off and as you can tell considering it's a tow truck wheel lift deal in the north it's honestly not even that rusty, uh, as far as I'm concerned, just the mounts are kind of, everything else, I mean, under the car, or under the truck in wintertime, it's pretty good shape, the hoses look okay for now, uh, they're not too badly cracked up or anything as far as I'm concerned, so I think we'll run it as is, it has safety chains built in, and we're going to put it on. Now, this is where I guess there is some differences of opinion on how we're gonna mount this thing. It is very simple. These mounts are adjustable. They're currently welded, so we'll have to clean that up and then they go in and out like a receiver hitch would. Uh, ultimately, you're gonna set it a lift uh, in the truck, push those in, you know, and then weld it. And it's actually meant to be bolted in. We'll probably do a series of uh, bolting and welding, but we'll see. The real issue, um, so obviously, yeah, frame rails run this way. It goes in, the unit will sit Behind the axle, kind of where the spare tire is, right there. And maybe some trimming and screwing around to do. We are going to take the box off just for ease. This unit can be put in supposedly um, without doing that. But I want to do some reinforcements to the truck. And this is where there's all kinds of people's opinions. And ultimately, I'm going to do what I think is right. Whether it is or not, I couldn't tell you. But I've been doing a bunch of research. I've looked at these for a long time. We'll get the bed off, and I'll show you, I think, exactly what I'm going to do. But uh, there's lots of trimming to be done until we get the, like I said, the spare tire and all that out. The bumper stays on, but there's some screwing around to be done. My plan is plate the frame. So I'm going to plate the outside of the frame. I'd like to go all the way down and then under the cab a little bit. The difference with this unit versus an actual wheel lift unit, you know, a tow truck, 
is where the unit's gonna be and where the leverage is. Everything on this is gonna be behind the rear axle. When I had the boom in there, I actually had it, well, you can see that's one crossbar was there and the other one was, is there a rust part? Oh yeah, right, right there. So the weight was kind of in front of or on top of the rear axle, trying to get as far forward as you can. Now this is obviously gonna be behind the rear axle. So there's gonna be more leverage on the truck with this unit, you know, with the sling unit. However, I'm getting my bed back to fill full of garbage, which is handy. I can lift cars uh, quicker, easier, and we can lift more modern stuff. So this is the way of the future. I gotta say slinging J-hooks and chain in the sloppy wet is not as much fun as it may sound. So we're gonna use, we'll have to figure out a winch on this truck some way, somehow. I sold the other one to offset the cost of this. So we're not into this for a whole lot of money. Anywho, I wanna plate the outside of the frame as much as I can. Uh, I think I'm probably gonna plate the top of the frame as well. And a lot of guys will plate the bottom of the frame. I think I might do that a little different. The bottom of the frame can be done anytime, right? I think I want to take some uh, thick flat bar, put it on end, and run it uh, underneath. And, and well, we got to see what we have for clearance. Now, the issue again is going to be leverage. So you put the unit back here, it's going to want to, you know, lift the truck that away. These things typically tend to crack and break right in this section. So we're going to plate, do whatever we can, go as far forward as we can. Hopefully that will move some of that load to the front of the truck. It'll help the truck drive nicer, steer nicer, and all that. Again, it's a one-ton truck. This lift is literally meant for three-quarter ton or one ton. This exact vehicle is what this is meant for. It has a 3,500-pound working load lift, 4,000 max, and a 7,500-pound tow, 8,000-pound max. So more than anything we're ever going to tow. In theory, this lift should be able to lift up an entire Tri-5 Chevrolet because they're about 3,500 pounds. What we're going to be doing is towing them motor front, uh, you know, rear wheels forward. So we're only lifting the back end of a car up, 1,000, 1,500 pounds. Shouldn't be a big deal. Worst case, we may put some helper springs on this thing. Some super springs or something like that, but we'll see exactly how bad it sacks itself out and go from there. That big wrecker unit was definitely heavier than that. So the truck will weigh less with this in here, but it will allow more leverage. Feel free to tell me in the comments how everything I'm doing is wrong. Totally acceptable. Like I said, this unit is meant to be put in as is, and you don't have to plate the frame if you don't want to. So I know there's a lot of different uh, opinions on that, and we'll talk about it as we go. Step one, I'm gonna get out of there, unbolt all the bed bolts, hope they come out easy. I think there should just be a master connector for the electrical, and we'll have to pull this thing up. Hopefully it'll go okay, but I guess we'll just see. Fingers crossed. Box off, could have gone a little smoother. You know, a guy maybe could have asked a friend or Danielle to come out and watch. Instead, I just uh, suffered through and smashed a, a taillight out of it. But I mean, you know, plenty of new one anyways, right? Shit. Otherwise, I don't think we did too much other damage. It kind of scraped the back of the cab a little. But I don't know what happened, it kind of popped off the strap. Oh yeah, we got a little, a little scrape there, but no one will see that. So this is what we're left with. Um, we have to cut off my old bracketry. 
but it's going to be a pretty simple deal the spare tire unit has to come out so i guess we got to move all the wire how does this work oh it's just a block so we got to move that for the tail lights ditch that the unit's going to sit right there i actually think it's going to be a a fairly easy install shouldn't have said that out loud this is some miscellaneous stuff i had when the we're screwing around with the other stuff and then yeah it's gonna need some wire wheeling and cleaning but this is pretty straight we'll re-weld there you know we got to go around this it's gonna be the only real pain in the butt and then down there so yeah meh it should be it should be okay i'm thinking like stuff like this where the mount is that's kind of double wall anyway so if we just jam a you know piece of steel in there weld both sides it'll probably be fine or really this bracket i wonder if we can just even weld that across who knows we'll uh more steer steel and more welding will help so the idea is those brackets on the side just slide up and they bolt in or actually use a u-bolt apparently and then the ones at the back are supposed to catch just a bumper bolt of some sort and i believe you lift it up we have to lose the trailer hitch so we got to take that out but this does have a trailer hitch on it you lift it up until i guess that's touching the frame or whatever center it and carry on then we got to run our power which we i have a bunch of power going back here anyways from the winch so that's all i think it's circuit got a circuit breaker and everything on it so we'll extend that but that's probably overkill even for what we need and then yeah all the stuff i was looking at it would appear as though like the stinger whatever you want to call it like right kind of where my boot is is where the bumper would be and that's how much sticks out the back so it'll be you know 18 inches longer but yeah that should work okay so i think at this point now we'll start uh taking the uh, trailer hitch off and all this is riveted so that'll have to be cut out i guess or plasma got the wiring out oh we gotta move the shock mount but that's probably why it has that right there for a shock mount maybe this was on a chevy it's not like i told me it was out of a dodge but put a tape on it real quick and just see okay well we got the bumper off and the trailer hitch off so that's good now this brace here um which holds the spare tire it's more than a spare tire obviously it's the brace holds the shock we got the shock undone it is i believe kind of riveted in with this uh rear shackle so i don't think i'm gonna cut this all well i'm gonna cut it out but i think i'm gonna cut it out and just leave the backing into it because otherwise we're gonna have to put new you know grade hardware and stuff in there why it's fine um as long as everything fits up we should be we should be good where's everything gonna be um, there might be some trickiness here oh no we should be okay i'm just I'm trying to picture this thing turned around but before i cut this out i think i'm gonna leave it in for now because we're gonna add i think metal on the top i don't know about the bottom yet because i kind of want to add some angle i might do that we're obviously going to plate the sides for sure uh the stuff that the box has to be off for ultimately if i want to weld on the bottom that could be done with the box on it's really not a whole lot different uh down the road and, and i get it everyone's gonna say put as much strength as you can or you're thinking i'm wrong either way like i said there's no real right or wrong way to do this and this is going to be a light light duty tow truck so just bear that in mind we're not towing three four thousand pounds down the road for hours at a time these guys at that detroit wrecker that's where they have great instagram videos and youtube and all that stuff and they beef the hell out of their stuff and that being said they have guys that are 10 years in they put 400,000 miles on a wrecker kind of deal that they have and, and nothing breaks at all so obviously they're they're this level and uh, for what we're gonna do i think we'll be okay and if it breaks in half well shame on me you guys get to judge me in five years from now on the youtube video when i'm swapping frames or welding them back together or whatever right so it's a win for everybody um so realistically all we have now is i welded some of this on this was just i guess where maybe the the boom was or something like that just so it sat on it to try and get it right to the frame so we got to cut that stuff off i'm going to get out the grinder and we're just going to start cleaning all this up it's it's pretty good i mean this is a pretty big frame i think these years are a lot uh beefier so it's 
a little over eight inches. Obviously, this is supposed to be a band clamp, and uh, it's, yeah, I don't even know if that would, no. So that wouldn't be able to band around whatever it was on. Uh, oh, and the measurement we have here is what? Hang on, hang on. Oh, give or take. So we're like 42 and a half. What's this frame width? Uh, forty-two and a quarter, forty-two and an eighth. So honestly, it'll be pretty close if we plate both sides with three sixteenths. We might be okay because this is kind of bugger welded, but it's all welded together. So to undo that would be a lot of work versus just wire wheeling in there, and I could just give it a bunch of really good welds. And then once this is in and weld it or bolt it or whatever, it'll replace this amount of structure, right? So take that out and go from there. Again, those Detroit Wrecker guys, they weld a bar across. So I don't really know if that'll make a difference, but realistically, with this out, that's the only cross brace we have until the, the Wrecker is on. I guess I could put the bumper back on. I don't know. We'll figure something out. And I guess for a lot of you East Coast guys, like this stuff's all in good shape. This thing's got... Uh, 300 and some thousand kilometers, so, you know, a couple hundred thousand miles, and everything is good and all rotten out, so we should be just fine. God, that's a big muffler. Hope the exhaust will clear, but if not, we'll do little modifications, and we'll make it clear, right? That's the worst part, it's still just flaky. Okay, I'm going to set some tunes up, and we're just going to start wire wheeling. I guess I should probably uh, cover this up just so I don't, you know, damage it further. Well, I cut the camera off, but that was many, many hours of grinding. Well, two hours. So I went over it with the stone. It's solid. It's good. There's no issues whatsoever. And I went over it again with just like a flap disc. And I'll probably flap disc it again to get it. I mean, you know, something like that on the sides. Ultimately, I'm just going to, you know, weld in the perimeter of stuff. And I think the big deal is... When you're welding, you want to weld a strip on the top and a strip on the side, but you don't want to join them. You want to weld them like kind of separately. And then uh, same here, I'll probably put a plate there, stop, because it's bent, plate, you know, keep going, stuff like that. My only real issue is this. I might just do nothing, I'm not too sure. It's already braced underneath. And it's already, you know, obviously this is basically where the, the hangers are is double brace. So the only thing I'd be doing is in this little section. So what I might do is maybe just weld the box mount to the, to the perch on each side. Because I still have to be able to get in here. This is where obviously a box mount is. Because I was thinking, well, I could plate that in. But that's not the plan. And I don't, I don't want to weld 
to the perch and to the frame real crazy because if that ever does rot out, which they do, if I have this thing 15 more years, I want to be able to just knock those rivets out and take it out and not have to grind on the frame and really, if I weld in there to there, that will be a problem down the road versus if I go here to here and zip that out and knock the rivets out and kind of keep carrying on. I think that's the plan. Hopefully my steel will be ready for tomorrow. They told me tomorrow, uh, Friday before Christmas. So that's when we're doing this. But when it comes out, I don't know. But hopefully I can get it after work because if I can't, we're at a, a dead stop, which would be very unfortunate. But uh, I have hope. Anyways, I'll see you guys tomorrow. But hopefully I'm uh, a little less dirty and a little more motivated. New day. Back to tow trucking. Uh, so where we left it last night, we got everything kind of mostly cleaned up. I picked up some steel today. Unfortunately, I had ordered a couple of days ago <clears throat> what I wanted was 316 by 7 and uh, plate, and they didn't have any, so they had to cut some, and then I guess they had a big job come in. It got, my order got pushed, such is life, and anyways, I went on my lunch break today to pick it all up. It wasn't ready yet, and it was the old hang around, and I just didn't have the time. So what they did have in stock, and they gave me a deal on, was 6-inch plate. So my thought was, I mean, it is what it is. From uh, from kind of angle to angle is, well, 7 actually might have been a little much, like 6 and 3 quarters, so we're going to run 6-inch six six inch plate uh, down the side of the truck, and then I got some of this bar here. Again, if I want to do the bottom, I have enough, but they gave me, they actually gave me a deal on everything, so I can't really complain. You know I mean? It's the way it goes, I get it. It's a Friday, before Christmas, I'm working, they're working, such is life. So, this is what we're going to put on the top. So the idea is, the more I Google it, oh, well, my buddy Dallas, he's been great, coaching me. Uh, so the side is going to give us the, you know, the this motion uh, strength and this on top and bottom will give it like the compression and the pulling strength. So the top should be pretty simple. We're going to start on this side because I did kind of wire wheel this good, but we'll put a piece down to about here, another piece sideways, and then another piece kind of to the front, and then the side will be basically the same. A plate there, we'll plate here to where it stops, I'll weld it, I'll cut just around this. This piece will be a little bit of trickery. It'll be what it's gonna be. And then, uh, you know, down the front, same idea. Uh, yeah, I mean, the other thing is a lot of these trucks I watch, <clears throat> they're plating the frame to where the cab is, so that's what I had in my head, which I still think I'm gonna do, but, a lot of these repo trucks now, if you're looking at them, they're actually a four-door or extended cab, I guess I should say. So they're plating to under like the, the cab, but I think everything is, I don't know, further back or what. Also, these leaf spring hangers are sturdy versus what I've been looking at, some more modern stuff. And this frame is bigger than a lot of the Fords and Dodges. So I already think we're ahead of the game. And I mean, ultimately, it's in really good shape, so I can't complain too too much well i can complain and you guys will listen right because that's what we do around here so i'm going to get started pretty simple i'm just going to start tacking it in we'll have to drill out some holes uh i don't know which one's which but one of these is for the bed that's for the bed and then i don't think this does anything these slots because that's bed and that's the bed but uh yeah let's get after it start welding crank her up to 11 <laughs> Okay, so I think what I'm going to start by doing is the top plate. Um, just because I think it'll be easy-ish. I think the idea is tack it all together, make sure I'm kind of happy with it. Go from there, 46 and a quarter. So I'm just going to mark this out, start cutting, and I'll, uh, I'll bring it back. No, I just had a marker. <sighs> All right, it's off to a good side.
That was an hour and 10 minutes. However long I got to be in time lapse, hour 10. Not bad. So now, I mean, obviously everything's just kind of stitched together. It needs a lot more welding, which is, is totally fine. You know, as I was looking at this thing, and it's funny, the back section of the frame is not nearly as robust. I mean, it's like a C-channel, which is fine. Um, but then you get up here, it becomes double wall in this section, like where the shot cross member and all that is. But then from here forward, it's actually C, but then it's like, you know, rolled over a little bit. So I, up here is significantly stronger. Um, I'm gonna go to right about there where the cab is, I think, like I always, I mean, at the end of the day, if we want down the road, we're doing that on the ground no matter what. But at this point, this, ah, I had another piece of, uh, steel here. Oh, just grab this. If I do something along vertically, maybe it's angle or, or I mean some thick, you know, some thick bar down this way up to kind of under the cab there, that'll give it a lot more strength for, you know, for the tilting uh, wise. But I mean, that's all pretty sturdy. I might in this section, I was thinking if I build a little plate where I could weld here, to here, you know, from the perch to the, well, perch to the, the box mount might be kind of smart. That way I can still get in here and get into the box. That's no issue. And, uh, yeah, uh, you know, had this been an extra inch would have been nice. It would have been a half inch more top and bottom. So it's definitely not perfect, but I, I think that's going to add a heck of a lot more strength. I mean, I don't think it's doubling the strength of the, of the box, but, or the frame, but you know, 20 or 30% more works for me. So we'll do that, get this thing in, you know, in talking to Murr, and Murr is the genius with these things, having never done anything with a tow truck before in his life, but it is a one ton frame. It is meant to be kind of beat on. Let's be honest, what we do to half ton trucks. Uh, and again, if it's your own truck, if this is like an employee truck, you know how those get treated. This thing here, we're not gonna be pulling dualies with it, you know, Cummins motor first and all that. We're gonna be careful with it. And uh, the big test will be once it's all together and we lift something, what's the gap between the box and the cab look like if it just goes wham? Well, we'll probably need a little bit more welding. So yeah, I'm glad I'm doing this. It's boring, but uh, it will make for a nice product once completed. Well, this was a pile of work, but everything is plated and welded. It was uh, many hours welding but uh, I'm confident with that being pretty dang on strong I weld this little bar in here just I don't not that it really makes that much of a difference but just in case and I mean if we have to I don't know if we have to pull up on this or do whatever I don't have the engine crane over here I'm hoping I can do it without the engine crane because it's kind of an awkward spot to get right now uh, what I'm hoping is I can kind of just push the truck forward drag this over, push it with the bobcat maybe. It's uh, it's definitely not light, but I, I, you know, with the bobcat lifts it, it can lift maybe you know, 800 pounds or something like that. And it wasn't tippy, so I don't know what it would weigh, but some, maybe I'll smash more taillights out. Got another one, 80 bucks, Amazon, can't go wrong. So my plan now, we're just gonna cut this out with the plasma, I'm gonna cut it narrow, and then I'll kind of get in there and touch up a little bit. But again, I'm gonna leave the inside bits because it's all riveted together so that'll be just fine um yeah once we get that done we'll kind of clean it up my only concern i think i may have to cut the exhaust and reroute it unfortunately uh, i'm not sure or at the very least the exhaust probably has to come off or be cut the unit can go in then we can kind of snake around there because it's it's gonna have its mount pads here and then go across well, I don't know. We'll see what we can do. I do want to cut this as well. Like I have to, unfortunately, you know, zip cut all this out so these become movable. We'll get the thing in, the nose slide in from the outside. Might be tricky. I might pull a wheel or do something. I'm not really too sure, but we're not too sure together. There was no instructions. You buy something used off the internet. Let's get the plasma out here. Let's cut this piece out, get some room in there. Um, I might just kind of draw a couple holes once with the plasma 
in the plate and I can clean it up with the with the drill after. We've got a couple there we got oh a couple there we gotta take care of for the box mount as well as in here. So we gotta make sure we get those taken care of. Well those can happen anytime. That just has to happen before the box goes back on. But it should be good. And uh, it did have little rubber pucks that the box actually kind of sat on. So it the box should sit at about the same height with this bracing on there. Just be uber tough. I'll start cutting. What a lot of work. I was trying to film it, but going from here to there, I was manhandling, I knocked the tripod over. Disaster, but looking good still, yeah. Uh, I wanna hit the store before it closes, get a few things. Cause I feel like I'm gonna need to go today and tomorrow and then everything's closed. So, you know, it's the old get everything you think you need. And I still have tomorrow as a backup versus going back twice tomorrow. And I use a break. We got the unit in, I got it centered. Um, the exhaust fits like it's perfect. <laughs> this is as far this way as we can go because of the way the brackets are. I'm not going to lie, the, this bracket is awesome. Like there's lots of meat to weld to it. This one could definitely be better. I assume it was must have been on some sort of a truck where it, the frame dropped down. But this looks like it was added on. Um, I think I do have some quarter inch plate. So I'll weld this on and then uh, maybe weld some plate to it or do whatever. But realistically, we can tag a bolt there, two there, and then like I said, I'll probably just drill a couple in there. That side, there's a bunch of computer stuff, so it might not get a bolt, or maybe just one. And then same on the other side, the bumper is pretty much where it's gonna be. It has to go ahead, just a scotch, uh, maybe like an inch. But that's about right, what it looks like on the old internet. So that's fine. Um, yeah, we can weld that. We can then, I mean, I can weld it to the frame if I want. I mean, I guess it all depends. This thing is meant to be literally uh, three bolts at the back or two bolts at the back and like literally a band, like a U-clamp or a, like for a leaf spring shackle on the front. So I don't know. I think my grade eight bolts and a bunch of welding should be just fine. Obviously I'll be checking it and stuff like that. It's uh, never done this before, but with enough weld and enough metal, I'm pretty confident. It went in pretty good. 
uh, I don't know. I can't really complain. I think it'll look neat. I'm babbling. I have done so much welding and fabrication today. It's bananas, but like I said, it's almost 10 o'clock. I want to the store before they close. I got to be that guy to buy, uh, I need a pump and a tank, and I want to kind of plan that out. I'm thinking maybe somewhere up here, because there's lots of room on the bed. I can put a pump, yeah, hopefully a pump and tank, or there even. I'm not really too sure. I think in front of the wheel is probably better than behind, just because that's where all the crap's going to go. Not that it's not going to go forward, but it is what it is. Part of me thinks I should put the tank in the bed just for easy fill because that looks like it's going to be a bit of a pain. But if I build a bracket where maybe the tank is secure like a band clamp, we can always take it out, fill it if there's ever a leak, and go from there. Because let's be honest, I mean, breaking a line or whatever is possible. And yeah, but really, it's a lot of work to take the box off. Well, it's not a lot of work, it's a lot of screwing around. I mean, it's eight bolts, one main connector, and then you can lift it off, smash one tail light dent the box and it's off and you can get to everything for quite easily repair so if you had a two post lift this would be easy the shock lines up good we got lots of room from the diff i don't want to worry about that they like said the exhaust it's got a hanger right here i'll take the hanger off of that we'll just weld it on there and i mean it'll be fine what a good unit uh yeah I think I might just put a couple of tack welds just to hold it uh, while I go. It's on the floor jacks, but you know what? Floor jacks bleed down and all that. It's centered. It looks good. I'm happy with it. So let's not bugger with it too much, right? See you guys shortly. Another new day. I was burnt out and tired yesterday, but we should be able to get hopefully a lot done today. Maybe even test it out or at least find out it doesn't work. That'll always be good. Uh, I got a bag of miscellaneous hardware. So I got a bunch of grade 8 bolts, which I'll sink through there. I'll probably uh, blast through a couple with the plasma and then just auger them out after. That's a lot of steel to drill through. I picked up this pump. This is very similar to what this unit would have come with. It's a one gallon deal. Um, I got a couple of fittings on it. Maybe I should have got some 90s. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of spots to put it. I think kind of right up here is going to be the plan. There's a couple of mounts on the bottom, so we can maybe accomplish something there. It is fairly heavy, but a little bit of heavy steel. Well, to the frame, have it go out. It'd be a bit of a pain to get to that box bolt, I think, but we'll have to plan for it. Otherwise, I mean, everything just kind of has a, you know, a little stitch weld. I'm pretty much ready to, I think, completely weld it together. I want to get the bumper fit, make sure that's all good, but I think we should be okay. And uh, I got to weld in these, whatever, uh, the adjusters. It's, it's welded, but just permanent welded. Then we got to screw with all this wiring, and that's my only fear. But it looks like it was ripped apart a little bit. There's some funniness, so we'll have to see what works. Hopefully all those solenoids work. Uh, I assume this thing all comes apart, so worst case we can do that, but realistically it would be nice just to have this thing as a unit again and uh, carry on. So let's go ahead and set up the plasma maybe and start blowing some holes in the steel and then we'll auger it out and I'm just going to kind of bolt it on. I got a bunch of grade 8 hardware, get all that back together and yeah, like I said, I think we'll do two at the back. This is what I'm really worried about in the back where I think a lot of the weight will be. And then, uh, yeah, at the front, we'll sink a couple wherever, or we can actually, there's a lot of material to weld to on the front. So, yeah, let's just start cutting and drilling and welding until it's uh, sturdy. Don't go lift something up or try to lift something up. And if it breaks, well, we'll keep welding.
What a lot of welding, but we got some bolts in the back, the bumper's secured. Everything's taken care of there. Um, I did a little screw around the front, I mounted the pump. So this is a bit of a catch-22. I wanted to keep it high because the curve of the box. This is going to be just barely below the box, um, I think, I hope. Uh, by like a, a couple inches. Hopefully these will curve over. This may actually be a situation. We may have to get some 90s. I'm going to have to do that later today yet. But whatever, such is life. Um, but yeah, so that's in. I filled the thing with the oil. I have the controller. So this is what I ordered up. So pretty simple unit. It's got like a on, off, up, down, in, out, open, close. And a little connector. So we'll do that. Um, I think the box needs power and ground, power and ground to the uh, motor. So we'll probably test that with the jumper pack. And then the real issue we're going to run into is the solenoids. But again, they're pretty simple. All there is is one mass of ground and then basically power to it. So we just got to figure out which wire does what, which will trigger a solenoid, you know, in, out, open, close, whatever. And obviously they're, they're tandem. So, you know, like, let's just say these two solenoids here would be up and then down. And we just got to make sure that the wire going to it is correct. Pretty simple. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to have something to eat. Because this might be stressful and cranky. I've done all this work. If it doesn't work, uh, it'd be tough to take. But we should be able to get it all together. Hopefully it'll kind of do its thing. And then ultimately I already have wire run, big heavy 12... Uh, 12 volt to the pump or for the pump all we have to do is ground it run a 12 volt switch to it obviously you don't want to have this on all the time you don't want to have it on a toggle and uh, or you know I could probably just have it toggle to this now that I think about it if I have this yeah I bet if I just run constant to this and that we should be just fine and that will allow this to control everything no instructions so it's a bit of a who knows what, and I might put like a master kill or something like that on it just cause, but that's the plan. Hopefully everything will work out good and I just gotta run out one more time to get some different 90s, but it'll work as is to we put the box on. We're just gonna run into a bit of a clearance issue, but honestly, a lot of work. It's been two full nights, like after work till midnight or one o'clock in the morning and then now one half day, but we're getting there, so it can't be done. And the plating was a big part of it. The installing of the lift is probably an afternoon. Okay, so the pump is on. Uh, it looks like a bit of a rat's nest, but really it's not that bad. I'm just using this, uh, this switch to kind of trigger everything. I, uh, I ran some new connectors, as you can see all the blue ones. So that's good. I tested everything. It should work. I was clicking it. The solenoids seem like they're moving. So let's... Uh, Let's run it. Maybe we should probably run the truck so we don't kill the battery. A little fresh air in here. I think the old girl stirred. Look at that. Okay. So I... The switch is controlling the operation deal. Okay. Turn this on. What's going on? Huh. Well, I guess we have some figuring to do. Well, here, doing something. So this is a bit of a funny situation. I was grabbing power from for the switch off the solenoid. Well, when it was running, it was sucking it down to like eight or nine volts. So we're gonna need dual batteries in this thing or something because it, it draws some jam. The other thing is the switch is wired backwards. Well, in my mind anyways, but when the light goes off, it means it's working. So I wired the switch up to a booster pack, but now kick that on. Got the back off this thing still, but 
Huh? She's a little seasy. So she needs a little grease. The little arm that's supposed to retract is not happy on the cables. Down. Check these. I assume those are supposed to go ooh, together. Holy moly. Okay. So I think this needs some grease and some cleaning. But otherwise, look at that, we'll be able to lift the car right up high. How far will it go? We're gonna hit the garage. Oh yeah, look at that. Well, that's all she's got, but that needs some grease on it for sure. Yeah. Want move side to side? Not really. She needs greased up. Okay, well let's get cleaning on this thing. Might as well shut all this off. So it needs uh, switch wired 12 volts properly, obviously, but it works. <laughs> That's awesome. So we got to go ahead and wire wheel this thing, uh, get all the rust and junk off. That doesn't feel too bad on the bottom, but you probably smear with grease in it a few times. This is obviously, everything works at least, but she's probably seen better days just in the way it kind of works. I don't know, maybe something is seized. And then like I said, these, uh, this thing here with the hydraulic line, it's stuck all the way out, so we're gonna have to oil that and work on that a little, but wow. Not too bad. So now I have to finish welding this in, because I didn't do that. I'll weld the hell out of those real quick, put the shock in, and then really it should be able to be kind of cleaned up and driven outside. There's a little bit of wiring. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> okay, let's clean this up. So I cleaned up a few things. Last little, I had to weld a brake line on. The exhaust hanger is pretty ugly. I've got that done. Might put a little brace under that for the pump is. That's quarter angle. It's probably pretty sturdy. Uh, yeah, everything's pretty cleaned up. We've got everything kind of moving in and out. This thing, like, like I wire wheel, it's like still has the original paint on it. Like on the tow truck in and out part. Like that's, that's amazing. Well, I look crazy. Anyway, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna rock guard the whole frame. Um, honestly, this truck is in really good shape. I know a lot of you guys up north run into a situation where it just becomes rotten out and stuff. This thing's in pretty nice, pretty good shape. Uh, these are the only wires, the stuff we gotta kind of run. I'll have to get some 90s. I don't know if we'll do it today or not, but I wanna get this thing kind of painted up, get it all dialed together. We have our wires back there for the tail lights. Then all I have to do is run the remote and a switch 12 and we should be able to kind of take care of it. So let's, uh, let's fog this thing. Everything is blacked out. Uh, I painted the springs black, but everything else is like uh, undercoating stuff. 
you know, there, there's mixed opinions on that. I can kind of hide the rust behind it and everything, or the water behind it, but eh, what are you going to do? The reason I kind of seam, see, or, uh, seam welded all the plating was to keep any water from getting between it and doing some frame jacking. And really, I mean, this truck's a 2008 or 9 or whatever, so I mean, 15 years old. It's been cleaned up and been, you know, put back into service. Um, I'll probably end up spraying just oil. I'm a big believer in that, just on the inside of the frame rail and just everything. Got the shock in. I ran the hydraulic lines, you know, nicely. I don't know if I showed that or not, but, you know, put 90s on them. Ran those nice. I kind of inspected all the lines. They all look in decent shape. There's one that's not the greatest, and it's, uh, uh, it's right here. But I think what happens is as the lift goes out, it kind of cranks on that. So whatever. I sprayed now with some oil, and ultimately that one there, if the bed's on, we can do it. Anyways, because it's all from underneath. I gave everything a good grease, and actually grease came out of everything, so that looked pretty good. I wired it all up, so it's on a toggle. I tell you, this thing sucks the life out of the battery, though. Like, if it ain't running, you got problems. So, I think a second battery is in order for tomorrow. Um, I also wired up a, a little backup camera. So that's pretty slick, and this is the thing. Here, kick on and off, but uh, we'll fire it up. Maybe we should not asphyxiate. I think what I'm gonna do tonight, we'll just kind of show you one more time that it works, and then uh, ultimately the bed has to go on, but that's gonna happen tomorrow. It's late, it's midnight or something like that. It's been a long day. Um, I'm gonna drive this thing out. I want to clean up in here because it's a disaster zone. Uh, the engine crane's actually in the other garage, so we'll have to deal with that. But yeah, let's just see what the deal is here. So going out. Oh yeah, all the way. We're good there. And after kind of greasing it and playing with it, the uh, those guys seem a lot happier. They go out, they do go separate, but I don't know, maybe that's just where they're supposed to be. But they both snap into place, boom, and go down. It actually lifted the truck right off the ground. So it's got some jam. And that's that. Now you will, it sucks the life out of the, out of the truck though, I tell you. Sucks right down to like 12 volts, so <laughs> obviously a second battery is probably in uh, well in the future for tomorrow for sure. And then maybe even a bigger alternator. I don't know what this thing has on it. I was screwing around a bunch. This thing here. So what happens is it goes out as the pulls the hydraulic line out. So I actually welded this bar to it and worked it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. But that all seems good. Um, we got the plate lights in, trailer wiring's just sitting there. This thing here, I just have zip tied the controller. Must be extra, I don't know what that is. Uh, but yeah, everything's neat, zip tied away. I'm happy with it. Painted from the top, once the, the bed's on it, I can take it to work and get under it on the hoist and do the last little bit, and like I said, just oil it all down. So it should be fine. But that's really it for tonight. It will be tomorrow. This has been a long video. I know four days. I don't even know how long it's going to be. Probably not that much action because it's just so tedious. But uh, tomorrow, I'd like to maybe just back up something, see if it'll lift it before we put the box on and off, and then call her a day. I will put a battery in it and all that. But uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. I got to clean this disaster of a garage up. Okay, new day. Next day. Another next day. Um, they had a couple things to this, I put a second battery in it. I wired up a couple of deals. You wanna hop in, I'll give you a ride. And we're gonna go test this thing out. I did try it yesterday. And it did work. She's slow moving. Ooh, it's hot in here. Ooh, she's warm. All right. So I put the... Uh, the pump on a separate toggle, the solenoid, and the switch on its own solenoid. 
just kind of cuz. Oh, we're dropping things. You know, a little double sided tape, maybe. These are neat. So many things. Yeah, I gotta plug that in. Alright. So we're gonna try this out. Oh, it's a four by four. Try this out. You park close to the curb there, babe. Come on. Okay. Should I get out so we can watch the full action? Yeah, you might as well. I'm on. Okay, I'm not anymore. All right, so she'll be filming while I'm narrating. That's pretty exciting. So we'll go out all the way. And then I'm gonna open these things up. Oops, just so they're kind of straight. Whoop. Okay, figuring it out. Going down. Now we'll have to kind of realign here. So we want to have the things right in the center. Ish. Line up with the license plate. Okay. Down. A little slow moving, but at least I'm not. Uh, see, so I'm just sort of kind of dragging the ground there. Go until it hits. Are we touching the wheels yet? No. Really, eh? Huh. This one's long boy. That's all we got for out, I think. We may have situations. Huh. I have these stupid things on the bumper, which is a bit of a hassle. Okay, we'll figure it out. Stupid caprice. Okay, so now Whoa. did it wrap around? Yeah, all the way around, but it's around. Well, it's got more to go then. Yeah. It's all the way. So now, whoops, how does this go? Oh, out. Oh. Is it gonna hit though with these stupid things? Yeah. Hmm. I welded those things on and they're kind of in the way. They're gonna hit the bumper, I think. Are they gonna hit it? Yep. Oh, yeah. They are hitting it. Damn it. Well, that's gonna be a problem, actually. It doesn't go far enough back. Unless we lose the bumper, which I don't wanna do. I wonder what it'll be like on a Tri-5. It did the Bricklin. All right, let's go screw around with the Bricklin, I guess. Well, that's a real fail. Unfortunately. Oh. Why don't you just take those things off? Yeah, I will. Fun, though. Yeah, if it doesn't tow anything, it's a bit of a hassle. I guess it'll tow it from the uh, from the front. It'll do stuff. Yeah. That's not really handy when it comes to uh, this. It's got quite an overhang on it. Okay, let's go try the Bricklin. Okay. Danny giving advice. It's a little funny because it's on a bit of an uneven ground here, but You're pushing it. Okay, obviously it wasn't mean to do that. 
<laughs> We're learning. We're learning. Can you still these controls? Okay, so we'll drop her down. Go until we hit. Like that. Then. We on them? Okay. So now we can, uh, actually this one, we could probably pull it in a little. And then lift it up. There we go. Bada boom. Turn everything off. Well, that's pretty nifty. Yeah, it's not even on the bump stops. Definitely needs a little bit more spring, but it works. So unfortunately, yeah, the the reach is going to be a problem. Uh, Try five Chevrolet. Hopefully, it's less than a Caprizi. It looks less than the Caprizi. Yeah, you have to get a tape measure up. But yeah, there we have it. So it works ish. Well, it works as it should. Uh, it's meant for, I mean, modern stuff, front wheel drive cars. So I guess that's probably the issue. Is a lot of times you're grabbing it in the front, and it's way less reach which even tri fives are the same thing but they're pulling drive shafts i don't want to do that so okay let's uh so wait, do you have to strap this or anything or you would... yeah no you have to run a strap over the over okay. the wheels i mean that's precarious no you run a strap you over the wheel it <laughs> yeah run a strap over the wheel it has seat to chains in it ready to go so you just okay. click it on something and you're gone so well that's pretty cool honey yeah wow amazing let's get a tape measure and see if we can actually tow a tri five chevy before i lose my mind here no, we'll put a box on. That'll be fun. Center of the tire to a bumper is 44 inches on a Tri-5. On a Bricklin, it's 40. Oh, yeah. It must just be crazy on the Caprice. It's 52 inches overhang. Caprice. On a Caprice, so yeah, which makes sense. Yeah. So if we knock those off, it would pick it up, but it wouldn't. She wouldn't be a turning very good. But this, we should be fine. I'm thinking. And then uh, down. Getting used to the controls is a little different. And then at which point is it? Uh... This is. Oh, there we go. Figuring out when the truck is uh, level is something too. Mean. Probably gonna hit the bumper, eh? Really? really? Just barely. Oh, well, it works. Okay, so I gotta cut those bumper things off, or, I mean, realistically, ditching the whole bumper altogether would give us another six or eight inches. I wonder how much turning, because it was just barely touching, eh? On the crease, yeah. no, it was touching. Yeah, yeah, but it was just barely kind of grabbing. So if I cut that off, we'll get another four or five inches, but it won't give us a whole lot of turning ability, ability. Okay, let's get set up. We'll put the box on this thing.
we also have all of our fingers. There's a crowbar there. Where? It's still there. Can you get it? <laughs> you close it on the crowbar. <laughs> No. Oh, kick it out of the way, I'll get it. <laughs> clear. Did it self clear? No. My hand is here. <coughs> Good? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, there we have it. That was a lot of work over a few days. Hopefully, It'll need a little bit of love, I guess, with the, the bumper. Honestly, a flat bumper would fix everything, but hopefully it'd be able to lift a, really, a Tri-5 Chevrolet, all that really matters. And I guess Camaros and stuff like that, they have very little overhang. Honestly, I feel like this has less overhang than the freaking Caprice does, for crying out loud, but... Uh, Stop body the Caprice! She's a big girl. But there you go. This is like my dream truck. So this is the truck I've wanted for a long time. So I thought anyways, I guess we'll see. Once I do all that work and it can't lift anything and I've already sold the record, that would be pretty good. I'll have to build another one of them, but uh, we should do pretty good now. Um, yeah, I think we're committed to this truck for quite some time. So obviously I gotta change the tail light, maybe knock the box out a little bit. It's got a slight dent. Hey, why do you have to change the tail light? Well, anger, but honestly, the bobcat removal didn't really go much worse than the doing it by hand with two people removal. So, don't don't slip and fall there. Uh, it needs a few box bolts put in, tail lights hooked up, a tail light changed, and then it'll be uh, pretty much ready to go. So I'm pretty excited about it. We'll definitely have to try and move some stuff around. Stuff's really really knocking stuff over. I uh, yeah, dream truck. Follow your dreams, kids. But uh, yeah, well, you know, we're gonna move the bricklet and I wanna play with it and make sure it can lift the Tri-5 Chevy. Because if it can't, we're really gonna have a problem. And I don't know what we're gonna do. I guess buy a tow dolly. <laughs> Instead of an old tow truck. But thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys found this interesting as much as I did. And now we can, we can like repoy them we want. Oh. I didn't drill the holes to lock the box in at the back. We'll fix that on my own time. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> oh, that's bad.